Relationships are so strange because we believe we should just be inherently good at them. It's similar to money in that no one really teaches you about managing your money until you're an adult, at which point you wonder, well, are we supposed to learn that? Did I miss the financial management class? And so many of us, especially guys, feel almost ashamed to ask for relationship counsel. You're reading a book called The Five Love Languages, Guy, it's like. In a coffee shop, I didn't want to be seen dead reading this. Now, I'm not telling you that because I'm an expert in relationships. In fact, my girlfriend would agree with that statement. Rather, I'm telling you that because no one is ever born knowing how to be in a relationship with someone and spend that much time with them. But guy, if you're going to spend a lot of time with someone, shouldn't you get engaged? Having knowledge of the topics we discuss in these videos, at the very least. Very significant. In light of the fact that most people don't go for relationship guidance, where do we acquire ours? We learn it from television, we learn it from movies, and even as children, we are conditioned to believe that true love is created when one person becomes utterly fixated on another, and that other becomes utterly fixated on them in return. I want to debunk that notion in this video and go into great detail about it since I truly believe that doing the opposite will yield better outcomes. This video makes three primary arguments, the first of which is that getting overly attached to anything actually has a negative impact on your performance. Listen to me out now. Consider this like you would a job interview. We believe that if we go into a job interview truly needing the job and being extremely hungry, we will do better. That usually only makes you think about yourself more. Maybe you're not acting like yourself. You might be really anxious. People notice that and wonder, what the hell is wrong with this guy or this girl? We believe that all it takes to get a good body is to just brainwash ourselves with images of shredded individuals sporting six-pack abs. But what really is the issue there? We are overly reliant on it. And because you don't have this, you start berating yourself whenever you look in the mirror. You start pointing out all of your shortcomings. Even though other people can't even see your love handles, you start to. Instead of boosting your confidence, it undermines it. Let's return to the perspective that most individuals use when thinking about a relationship, a crush, or a potential date. If I'm truly into this person, if I'm really fascinated with this person, that's going to win them over, you think. They'll like me more if I do it because I've seen it in the movies, elsewhere, or perhaps just because I have no control over it. I'm just 100% committed, right from the start. Such energy frequently manifests as the urge for someone else to complete you rather than as passion or interest. When you pursue someone and feel like you're pursuing them, you also give off a needy, even insecure vibe. It's crucial to realize that the more persistently you pursue someone, the more likely it is that you lack confidence. Here is the second point that you should definitely comprehend. The majority of people's conceptions of relationships are wholly erroneous to begin with. According to Osho, the author of the book, Intimacy, there are three different kinds of love, with most people focusing on the first two and avoiding the third, which is the most significant. Dependent love is the first type, when one person is valued lower down and the other higher up. The majority of people approach dating in much the same way. You are dependent if you are always checking your phone because you are infatuated with someone and believe they are not returning or responding to your texts as quickly as you would want. Dependence is not really love. One person has more interest than the other. It is one of the lowest forms since, despite appearing to be love, it is ultimately not. Nobody wants to be dependent on someone, and if you're the caretaker in a relationship, that job will soon grow tiresome. Over time, taking care of someone else's needs, whether they be emotional or material, ties you. Codependence is the second type of love, in which both partners are reliant on one another. Some individuals mistakenly believe that this is love, but it's not. You might have some of that preoccupation at the beginning of a relationship, but it will eventually wear off. At that point, you will both realize that you are both captivated with one another and need to be together constantly. Yet that isn't the most profound kind of love. The highest type of dependency is when both parties are self-sufficient and value each other equally. They decide to gather since their impact is greater as a group. 
Interdependence is the more advanced type of love. Love and freedom are our two most essential wants. But more than love, people need freedom. Nobody desires to be possessed. They desire to be loved, but not to be possessed. You are attempting to possess the other person if you approach or enter a relationship with one of the first two types of love. You are attempting to manage them. People don't like being in charge of them or feeling possessed. They have a gut feeling of this. They have a desire for love, but in the end, their need for independence comes first. Every time you have reliance or codependence, you are robbing someone of their independence, and when they sense this, they will want to flee in order to regain their freedom. Detachment from the outcome rather than from someone or something is crucial for this reason. You will undoubtedly achieve greater results if you let go of the notion of what you believe love should include and are more open to the flow, nearly caring less about how things turn out. In my life, I've witnessed this time and time again. One of the most potent concepts I've recently encountered is the idea of experimenting with it in practically every area. One of the topics we discuss frequently in my metamorphic coaching program is this. You begin to discover that you elevate yourself once you begin to embody this 2.0 version of yourself and shift into it so that it doesn't feel phony or ambiguous but rather just like a natural extension of who you are. Everything in your life, including the people you encounter and the chances you are presented with, is higher because everyone is on an equal footing with you. The third point I want to emphasize is that you must first work on yourself in order to experience this interdependent kind of love. This is so because interdependence calls for self-fulfillment and self-awareness from both parties. Before you can fully love another person, you must be able to accept and love who you are. This entails looking after your bodily, mental, and emotional needs. It entails focusing on your own personal development, establishing boundaries, and being truthful with both yourself and other people. Also, it entails being able to speak your needs and wants clearly while listening to those of your partner. When both partners are capable of doing this, they can unite to forge a union that is founded on mutual respect and admiration and is truly meaningful. It's not about wanting the other person to complete you or about possessing them. Rather, it's about enhancing each other's lives and developing as a couple. Relationships are difficult, so it's acceptable to ask for counsel and direction. Yet, it's crucial to approach them with a positive outlook and the readiness to work on yourself first. You may build a relationship that is genuinely gratifying and long-lasting by being aware of the many sorts of love and concentrating on fostering interdependence.